Hey everyone, thanks for dropping in. Appreciate you stopping by the channel. Hope you could like and subscribe if you're a new viewer or new watcher or didn't have a chance to subscribe earlier. Really appreciate it. Uh, today I'm going to do what albums did I play last night and I'm going to dedicate this uh, segment to my good friend Marty who passed away uh, two days ago. And uh, Marty was a, uh, a sweet soul, and I have a story about Marty that I'm going to show at the end where he came over. To, uh, he's, he's, he, he doesn't live close. He's about two hours away from us. And one day I got him to stop over for lunch, and I wanted him to show my system, which is a different system than I have now, but it, it would really sound great. I had a uh, great Vanderstein, Vanderstein uh, speakers, vintage Vanderstein's, and um, – different cartridge but the stereo was was sounding good and I, I i put some tracks on it i remember one album that i played and it actually music is so cool that it actually uh caused them to uh to to cry it, it, it evoked some memory uh that he didn't want to talk about but i'll show you the record and so i heard about him i heard about his death uh, through a message after I uh, played this set. Uh, this is actually two nights ago. Um, so I'm going to show you the music, and then we'll talk about what what actually caused, you know, Marty to, uh, to have such an emotional outburst. Uh, this is the uh, photo of what I listened to last night, if you can see that there. And we have... Uh, Jim Croce's Greatest Hits, which is very poignant, and that that caused me to think about a lot because of those songs. Uh, Dylan with the band Before the Flood, the OJ's Backstabbers, Dino, Desi, and Billy, which I just happened to pull out. A great album. I think it's uh, Vince Buss, Vince Buss something, uh, Blue Cheer. I'll look at that. The Nightfly and an album, The Records, by The Records, which if you're trying to find The Records to look them up on eBay, it's virtually impossible. I think you have to put in Starry Eyes, which is what their, one of their pop hit records where they're power pop uh, from the 80s. So here we go. Here's uh, Dino, Desi, and Billy. And I found this interesting because when I read the, the back, I go, wow, these guys are pretty good. And the, they do... A few Dylans, like a Rolling Stone, Mr. Tambourine Man. Um, I can't get no satisfaction. But when I read the pedigree of this album, it was uh, it's a it's a re it's a reprise. Um, you know, this Dino is D. Martin's son, Desi is Desi Arnaz and Lucille Ball's son, and Billy is a uh, his father was a uh, real estate Mongol in uh, California, I guess. And it, it says here that Frank Sinatra. Her, the three rehearsing in an upstairs bedroom at Dean Martin's house and then brought them to the attention of reprise. Producer Liesl Hazelwood, who's, a, who's acclaimed, took over and he included in the, in the band, the background musicians, Al Casey, Billy Strange, James Burton, who played with Elvis, obviously, and Ricky Nelson, Jim Gorn, the drummer, Jim Troxell, Dr. Jen, Gene Simmons, Jimmy Gray and, D and Donald Owens. And it was uh, arranged by Billy Strange, Jack Ninsky, and Lee Haley. And this is a tricolor uh, Warner. I'll show you that. It's in uh, really good shape right there. So I just played a few tracks. I wanted to hear uh, like a Rolling Stone. And I wanted to hear uh, Satisfaction. And Satisfaction, the drum is... The drum is perfectly aligned this is a mono right in the middle of your sound stage and it actually sounds like the charlie watts I, I guess it's jim gordon here's the uh blue cheer vince vince bus um before him yep at four at Eruption. Oh, okay. Vince Bus Eruption. It's it's in some hieroglyphics there. I don't remember the title. 
But this album is an OG. It's a stereo, Phillips. And this is fantastic. This is, out of all the records I played that in that session, I enjoyed this the most because I have it on a few hard drives. But this is the vinyl. This is an OG. It's an embossed record. But this is just strong. They do uh, Hendrix riffs. Of course, um, Summertime Blues is on here. Um, and I'll list all the records that I put on these sessions in the inner description of the video. So you can, you can look them up by title and uh, actual you know, catalog number. This is the uh, records I was telling you about. I love this record. I just picked this copy up in a collection of 80s records that I found. I have a, a copy as well, and I will show that collection because it's still in the crate. But uh, the records in a starry eye. This is on uh, Virgin. There's the Virgin Inner, and it's kind of uh, wrinkled. You can see that. But uh, check these guys out on YouTube. It's a power pop, starry eyes. They have some great videos. I actually did a short on starry eye, and I did a 60-second short. Uh, here's a great one, embossed cover. Uh, this was also in that collection. But it's the second copy I have. And this one's near mint. It doesn't have the original inner. The original inner is a hard inner, if you do have that. But this has, and this sounds really, really good. A uh, Bad Bad Leroy Brown, Operator, Photograph, Time in a Bottle, New York's Not My Home, I Got a Name. Uh, just very poignant. And after I heard what happened when my, my friend passed away, I... I I picked this up again, and I, and I said, wow, these songs ev ev evoke those memories. So another loss, uh, of course, too young, was Croce. Uh, and here we have a classic, which was also in the 80 collection that I picked up. This is near Mint. It's not an RL. It's a Columbia House uh, edition. But it is just as strong as the RL. I played this cover to cover one track to the end and here's the inner and the only difference is uh, manufactured by columbia house under license but this sounds i don't think there's a, a bad copy of this even if it's even if it's not a, a, a warner rl but this sounds great i guess they used the plates and he, he uh you know cut those plates so here's another one i just played a couple tracks uh, I felt like listening to the OJs. They were sitting around. Backstabbers. This is an OG. And I just played Backstabbers and Love Train on here. Uh, two cuts. But uh, fantastic. Really good, really good rocker. And the um, this is a stereo. Philadelphia International. Just unbelievable. And uh, last but not least, I played three sides of this. Dylan before the before the flood. This is an OG. Okay, I think this is on uh, Columbia. It may it may also be on Arista. I think it's also on Arista. But uh, there it is, Columbia. Just a fantastic, Dylan never sounded better. Of course, the band gets a lot of uh, sides themselves. They do Up on Cripple Creek, I Shall Be Released, Stage Freight. They actually get, I think, almost the entire side, too. The night they drove Old Dixie down, it ends with blowing in the wind all along the watchtowers on here. And, you know, Dylan wrote it, Hendrix took it away. But next to Hendrix's re re redo, uh, Dylan's version on this live is in that vein, is in the Hendrix vein with the band backing him up. So, uh, but let me just uh, show the one record that I remember playing for Martin. I played, yeah, you know, I probably played a couple hours worth of stuff, but I don't remember. This was going back three or four years. And um, he was he was such a cool guy. He could talk about Shakespeare to the Stones he could talk about Dante from Dante's Inferno to Dylan. Uh, he was a guitar player. He was an attorney. 
He was a writer. He was a teacher. He was a mentor. And uh, his battle with cancer uh, was just too was just too tough. So rest in peace. Uh, but this is what I uh, remember him listening to. Roy Orbison's greatest hits on on Monarch. Mo, on, this is on Monument, and this is the. Uh, this might be a mono. It looks like a mono, but see the uh, beautiful laminated cover original and uh i put this on i'm i'm not sure what song um here's the uh label and uh we talked i, I put this on i left the, i left the uh listening area to do something and uh he was really emotional about it he this song took him over uh this album or what song took him over and I, I, we were, we didn't really talk about it. I, I think it had something to do with a, um, a family member who was deceased and Doug, the, Doug Roy Arbison or, but he was a real sensitive guy. And, uh, I just wanted to dedicate this and say a few words out there as far as, you know, as far as this goes, it's, it's, you know, we're, we're losing people every day, not just celebrities, but a friend of mine, a good friend of mine just lost his dad. Another friend of mine lost his dad. Um, they know who they are out there. And um, I feel bad for them. And this is also dedicated to their loss. These are great. These, the, 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 these three people were um, are music lovers. They're audiophiles. They know so much about music. And like I said, Marty was an attorney, played guitar, just a, uh, a super guy who would be missed. And uh, I just wanted to put that out there. Uh, I had to I had to say that. So once again, uh, let me see here. Here's the records in detail in uh, total, and uh, I will list on the on the descriptions the actual numbers and the catalog numbers and the names and stereo or mono. And I uh, hope you enjoy this. Uh, you know, I enjoy doing this. Like I said, I'm documenting now uh, what I listen to, and it's and it's good. It's 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 good all the way around. So uh, keep rocking. Have a great day, and we'll see you later. I want to do that segment on the uh, '80s records that I picked up, which were about 44, 43 '80s records that, and the majority of them I did not have. They're they're really obscure uh, for me. I didn't buy a lot of records in the '80s. I was buying CDs. I was working. I was having kids, and uh, so you know we kind of. Tend, tend to lay off, but you get these through sales, um, you know, through yard sales and flea markets and stuff. So uh, keep rocking and uh, please subscribe. Really appreciate it. And we'll talk to you later. Thank you. Bye-bye.